Hey guys, it's Tony here. So today I want to talk to you guys about Bitcoin. And there's some things that you actually don't know. Like, number one, you know that you can send from yourself, person A, to somebody else, person B. Just send some, a transaction, an amount, you just specify, publish it, and then a few minutes later it comes to that person safe and sound. Yeah, but many of you guys don't know how this is actually happening. What's behind the story? What's behind the wall? What is actually happening behind this whole entire blockchain? That's what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. So let's get into the video. So many of you actually know what Bitcoin is, but for some of you that don't even know what it is, let me just tell you how it works. So basically some people decided to find a way to be able to send money from themselves to another person without somebody else having to stand in the way and actually monitor everything else. So basically this could be a third party, this could be a company, this could be a person, but there's a third party always checking and there's banks, you'll basically always send your money to a bank and back out. And basically they decided to find a way to actually make it so you don't need to have the bank and you just send your money from person A to person B with no one watching anything happen. So this is what I want to talk to you guys about today, Bitcoin. And basically, how it works is that you, person A, want, sends, uh, decides to send some money that you got, probably with your credit card. You basically put in your credit card and bought some Bitcoin. And you, let's just say, want to send a part to person B. And you probably don't even know how it works, but you don't care because you just know that it's going to end up at person B's wallet because you trust Bitcoin. But there's actually a process that it takes to actually get from person A to person B and it's actually really, really cool. So let's get through this process. So basically when you fill out this form and you send it out to the blockchain, before it actually actually goes to the blockchain, because the blockchain is actually where um, all the coins are actually accepted. So anytime there's a transaction, they're all put into a block and sent out to the blockchain. And when they are sent out to the blockchain, this is actually when they actually get published because the blockchain is basically like history. And in, if somebody wants to read how much money you have, they just go into the blockchain and they just read one of the blocks and just say, okay, this person has uh, deposited some money here and they just basically add it to your wallet. So that's why there you have money in your wallet. That's why it shows it has money because previously it has been recorded. But how does it even get to the blockchain? Well, basically when you send it out, you actually send it into first a pool and this pool is called the mempool. And in the mempool, there are a bunch of transactions and they're just swimming around waiting for a miner to pick it up because miners are the, the, the people that actually use their energy and use their time to send it to the blockchain. So basically, let's just say a miner comes along and, and this miner, he looks into the mempool. And basically, how he picks what he's going to do is he looks and he opens the transaction's details. And he looks. And so basically, this transaction uh, has this much fee because you can actually pick your own fee. Even though um, you have some accounts that just uh, put automatically fees. So basically, let's just say you're using some kind of uh, account like Bybit, let's just say. And basically, they have their own fee and you're using actual exchange and basically you automatically send a transaction out into the mempool and you uh, automatically do a fee but you can actually put whatever fee you want it just matters how fast it will happen so let's just say you put a fee with zero um it might take a little bit longer because what a miner looks for is a fee that is actually pretty much so because the fees actually go to the miners and not only that how hard is it to actually put this block how much storage it takes to put into a block because a block here is our block a block actually only has one size of one mb i forgot how it's called Meg megabyte and you can only put so much into this block before having to send it out to the blockchain so the miner must choose wisely so basically he choose the block that uh fill um the least space but give you the most reward so basically all the uh all those fees actually go to the miner so you should be so you should not be um suspicious about that so basically the miner put some of the transactions into the block and he has to now send it out. But there is the computers stopping in his way because first he has to enter the password. So basically, it's not really like this as there's a screen when you have to actually enter the password, but it is something like that. So basically, he looks at the previous block and using the previous block, 
he adds the previous blocks and this is called the hash that's the number that actually comes out it's called the hash he looks at the previous numbers answer because it's all recorded he looks at the previous numbers answer then adds it and then he so basically he looks at the previous numbers then add it with all his transactions so all those transactions list they all are all added and by the way this number will be unique so each person but not only him there's a bunch of miners just looking for blocks and trying to be the first one to actually put it on the blockchain but anyway he looks and he sees all those transactions he adds the previous hash plus these transactions plus a secret number and this number is what he has to find out if he finds this number he will be able to find the number that actually is the password so this number is unknown but if you find this number right here this previous number which actually makes the hash right then he will be able to publish it out so basically this is possible only with computers because people will be way too slow so basically the computer starts with one and goes through some kind of um some kind of secret profile that actually encrypts it and he makes it makes the number and so basically he adds this number Let's just say he starts with one and then he tries to he gets the answer by adding the previous hash plus this plus the secret number equals the hash he tries to put it in and no he gets rejected because um there is this let's get this there is this target and basically it prove it's like let's just say any number below this level will actually be accepted so any number below a certain level i don't know this is like zero to infinity it can be a lot of numbers it's like you have like a i don't know 256 digit characters and they're all in not decimal because we get zero through nine not that but it's actually something called hexadecimal which means zero through nine and then you actually add some more letters a b c d e f so basically you have this uh target and you have to find a number that's below this but maybe it's not this number it's actually the hash so you have to find the hash so it's random so the one might be this high right here even though it was a really low number zero might be over here or maybe it could be all the way at the top and basically the more miners there are the lower this number gets to make the difficulty always about the same so you could actually get a block come out about every 10 minutes so that's how that works so after let's just say he finds the right number he put he like he actually gets access to so um let's hide some stuff he actually gets access whoops He finally gets access to the blockchain. He can actually input his block. So let me just quickly clear out some stuff. So after he finds that number, he actually publishes to the block, but not before he has to actually stop by a, a security firm. So basically his computer, his computer, he it checks the block to see if it's actually does not have any fake transactions. So it looks at the previous, um, he looks at, it looks through the whole entire previous blockchain really quickly and it looks through all the transactions and it basically tries to figure out if he has any double spent transactions so basically any transactions that have been already spent before and if it does then it just rejects it and this is actually something bad because the miner uses a lot of energy to do this and he uses a lot of electricity which costs money so he basically loses money so this makes people not try to publish um spam or fake transactions or transactions that never have been uh, sent to the blockchain before like uh trying to withdraw some money that never been there before because the blocks just going to get rejected and then you're just going to be really sad because you lost money so basically they tried to figure out uh, transactions that actually are not fake so after they get accepted let's just say they get accepted so the ding 
And so basically they are sent to the block and they are accepted as the next block. So how after this, the process starts to repeat. The miners, the other miners that there are, they see that, oh no, basically he won because they actually get the block. Uh, he sends out the block. The first miner sends out the block to this miner and his computer checks it too because they don't trust anyone. This whole entire thing is trustless. You don't need to trust because uh, Bitcoin is a trustless thing, unlike third party where you have to trust practically everyone because they might be actually some uh, shady company in disguise. So Bitcoin is all trustless. So his own computer also checks. And if he also thinks that it's good, the thing, so it basically adds it to the blockchain and basically he has to start mining from that block again so he basically comes back to the mempool finds some transactions puts it into a block and by the way there are not only one miner there's like millions of miners trying to figure out so basically let's just say you have the world right here and of course that's the worst uh, world in the world but you have you and then you have a bunch of these other computers around you and you are connected to these computers so how basically this whole entire blockchain spreads is that let me just uh, draw some computers around the world and of course of course there's water everywhere and there's going to be some computers so find some of the nearest computers around you and let's say you you um and some other miner are competing so you find it first you send out to those miners they you send out to these computers now these computers don't need to be miners they're just called nodes nodes are computers that base there's another name for a computer that just checks bitcoin and then downloads his bitcoin to um his own personal off bitcoin blockchain so each computer actually has its own bitcoin blockchain on it so in order for it not to be trustless because it's a whole entire trustless system it asks other computers so it'd be like oh wait the, it looks at the computer next to it and it'd be like oh wait do you have this bitcoin oh yeah yeah, yeah. i checked and it looks pretty good then it looks at another one yeah, yeah yeah i also got it It looks pretty good and this after they check it to each other they send it to, to more people and basically it eventually comes to the miner which is trying to steal mine blocks and he he basically is just, oh wait, oh, I lost. So he basically adds it to his own block after checking it. And he starts mining it after that. So that's basically how it spreads. And when actually it gets accepted to the blockchain, um, it's basically added to the blockchain. And since the blockchain is on everybody's computer, everybody can see that, oh wow, you would draw some money and you bought a Lamborghini or something like that. So now that money is deducted from your wallet, which is, your wallet is basically just... Um, uh, looking through the whole entire blockchain and trying to see okay so you got some money here and then you spent some money here and then you spent some money so the total is this is how much you have uh money so if you have zero then you can't of course withdraw so if a miner comes out and you try to withdraw it will not allow that so this is how actually it all works and you might be like oh wait i never knew that before but then there's something even more interesting so when a miner actually publishes it and then the security confirms it this miner at the beginning it was 25 he gets a he gets a block reward and at the beginning of the first uh, when the block when bitcoin actually started it was 25 blocks every block reward so every single time he would publish a block he would get 25 bitcoin now that was crazy then after four years it's something called the having and basically it's now 12.5 blocks so now he gets only 12.5 Bitcoin every single time. And now, right now, what's currently happening is after the having happened again, there's already 6.25 blocks only available when you actually put out a block. So every single time you send a block out, you get 6.25 blocks. So it's actually getting less and less profitable to mine blocks. But in order to compensate for that, Bitcoin is raising the fees so that's why a long time ago the fees were practically zero because they actually are raising the fees for now to compensate for the 6.25 and the block halvings and this actually will cause so basically 6.25 and then it'll drop down again with three point something and then drop down again for 1.5 or 1.7 drop down again it'll keep dropping until bitcoin reaches the goal or almost reach the goal of 21 million bitcoin being on the market so if there's one there's going to be 21 bitcoin or the closest it could be because of course there's going to be satoshi and it's going to go to the closest it can be so it's probably going to be like 20 point nine 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 so that's going to be the closest it can get to 21 million bitcoin and when it reaches that target then the then the, just, the miners will just purely be defying and um, relying on the 
of the fees. So that's why they're going to be much higher and the miners will be much pickier trying to figure out the fees. So anyway, this is how it works and this is how you actually get Bitcoin. And then after that, of course, they send it out to the blockchain themselves, added themselves to their own block and try to send it out. And they basically send it out and sell it to some other person. So this is actually how um, blockchains, you, how you send a transaction from you to another person without having another third party and without any trust, which is really, really interesting, guys. And so if you have any questions or if you want me to explain some more things about Bitcoin, just comment down below and I'll try to answer you. And I will do these kinds of videos every single week trying to explain how Bitcoin actually does stuff, or maybe not even Bitcoin, how some other things stuff. Just ask me something um, uh, trading related or something like that. And I'll try to best to answer to you guys. Just comment down below. So that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't afraid. Don't forget to click that post notification bell. I'll see you guys next video. Bye.